Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to another video. Um, I'm gonna do another uh, like showcase type video here in my game room. Um, if this is your first time watching this, I'm basically just going around my home game room and uh, just kind of showcasing one game and talking about how I got that game, um, you know, the gameplay and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, I did another one of these videos a couple weeks ago and I focused on the game Solar Fox, my Solar Fox Cabaret right there, and did a gameplay video of it. And I mentioned in my last video that if anyone had any um, requests, because I do have a decent amount of oddball games and rare games that you don't see too often, um, I had mentioned that if anybody had any requests, let me know, and I would certainly do that machine. So, um, you know, another uh, YouTube user, um, Nintendo Arcade, who's based in the UK, has an awesome collection. Um, if you guys aren't following him, definitely follow him. Great videos, great collection. Uh, he had mentioned that I should do the game Swimmer. So that's what we're gonna do this week. Um, I'm gonna talk about this game, do a gameplay video, and, um, and yeah, so, uh, and if you have any suggestions for future videos, let me know. Um, cause I do post a lot of videos of like my pinball streams from Twitch and, um, and that's pretty much it. Besides that, I just do some like walkthrough videos a couple times a year to just kind of give an update on the game room status. So, um, I don't want to ramble on for too long in each video. I just want to get to the game at hand. So we'll go over to swimmer. By the way, I do apologize if the audio isn't great. Um, I don't currently have a lapel microphone for my, I'm just filming these on my iPhone. So, um, but I did just buy one. So for the next video that should be here and hopefully the audio is a little bit better. So I did want to show this, this is pretty cool. So a local brewing company here, um, in new England, Otter Creek brewing, which is up in Vermont. Uh, they created this beer called Bonus Stage IPA. So nice little shout out to Galaga. You can see the uh, the Galaga ships are hops. So thought that was pretty cool. Um, also thought I'd mention too that my Crystal Castles is up and running. I've had a hell of a time with this game. Um, a while back I thought it was the AR2 that was dead. But recap that. I thought the um, Big Blue was dead, changed that out, put in a new bridge rectifier. Um, and every time I did that, it would kick back on for like a week or so and then it would die again. And recently it was constantly resetting and um, looked on Clove, made a thread on Clove and someone had mentioned that, um, that the fuse block, there's one fuse in there in particular that's 20 amps and that one you know, I was getting fine continuity between the, the fuses, the, you know, the fuse themselves, but also the tabs, one tab to the other. It was working fine. Um, however, uh, these right here were the um, crimps for that particular 20 amp fuse. And you can see they're pretty burnt up. So looks like that was the issue because it's holding strong right now. Um, just thought I would mention that. And here's Swimmer. So Swimmer, um, I think kind of gets the reputation that it's it's an uncommon game. Um, it has amazing artwork for the side art, which unfortunately I do have completely covered up. <laughs> um, but it's a full, full machine side art. And it has this kind of cool art too inside that you don't see too often. Um, the art on this game is 100% original with the exception of the control panel overlay. When I got this game, the CPO was just completely falling off. So I had to replace that. There was no saving it. Um, so Rich at this old game printed this years and years ago. I don't think it's available anymore. Um, actually, they did have the entire art package, but I decided to keep the art that was here original. It's in pretty good shape for the most part. Um, Marquee is in perfect shape. So when I got this game, um, this is the only, you know, as collectors, we've all bought games from tons of different resources, whether it's 
Craigslist, Facebook, Clove, um, other apps. I've gotten games off Let Go and and those kinds of apps. Um, this game is the only game that I actually found through the Vaps page on Clove. So Vaps, for those who are unfamiliar, is a page that you can go to on the Clove forum where you put a list of all the games you own. And someone locally, I was searching for a swimmer. They don't come up very often. And, um, and I just happened to go on Vaps. And this game was on someone's Vap page uh, for $50. So I thought, you know, there's no way he's going to have it anymore. And I messaged him. He was local, which was even more amazing. And he still had it. And we ended up doing a trade. So I actually traded him. I think I gave him 50 bucks. And he actually wanted more at that point because it was he had put it on Vaps a long time ago. Um, so I gave him the 50 bucks plus uh, some Arkanoid stuff. I had an Arkanoid control panel with the spinner, uh, Arkanoid PCB and a marquee, which ended up <laughs> breaking when I gave it to him, but but that was okay. So we made that trade and the swimmer at the time was not working. Um, it hadn't actually been turned on for 10 years. It was sitting in a shed that was partially exposed to the, the outside world. It was kind of like in a carport type thing. Um, and it was the middle of winter and the bottom of the game was actually, snow was all the way up to here. And, um, that annoying sound is, is Puyan, by the way. <laughs> um, so snow was about a foot onto the game, and luckily, the, you know, the damage wasn't so bad. The team molding is off down here. There's a little bit of a uh, corner, broken corner right there, but I never fixed it. Whatever, it doesn't matter. But um, got the PCB up and running, recapped the monitor. Actually, the monitor right now I had, had to take out because the uh, anode cup happened to get a rip in it. And I think the pla uh, the rubber over time just kind of cracked. So I threw in this monitor, which unfortunately does have a good amount of Tetris burn-in, as you can probably see there. But for now, it's okay, it works. So, um, so yeah, we'll get into a gameplay. That's basically the story of how I picked it up. That was back in 2016. So I've had this game for uh, five years. Um, I, I love playing it. I think it's a fun game. It's a quirky game. The the uh, hit detection is a little off on this game. And, you know, like other games too. I mean, even Donkey Kong has poor hit detection in, in for certain parts of it. But Swimmer definitely is notorious, or it just is known for that, I guess. Um, yeah, let me grab a tripod, and we'll do a little gameplay video. That's basically the history of my machine. I do like to have a track mode sounds on in my basement, um, but they can get become a little much when doing a video. So we'll we'll quiet down uh, Tutankhamun right there. All right, so I'm just trying to keep this rolling without shutting off. So. There we go. It says probably pretty good for a little gameplay. I'm gonna get a stool. Now you've probably noticed, because I just noticed, it looks like I'm actually having a little bit of a RAM issue right there. You can see right next to the main character. Um, so I'll have to take care of that at some point. And Swimmer is just, um, it's a Monroe joystick, which, which I love. I like Monroe joysticks. Um, dive button on each side. Uh, it is a Century game, or Century. Um, it was made by, it was developed by Tekken and licensed to Century in 1982. All right, so... Here we go with the gameplay. And this game basically has four stages that just repeat over and over. Um, this first stage here. 
you're dealing with turtles and just avoiding the turtles. This side right here is your meter, which will show your progression to the end of the level. Once it fills up, you will get to the end. Every stage, or the three main stages in this game have a, like a boss that you have to beat. It's an enormous crab. So the dive button will just allow you to dive underneath the logs. If you touch anything but the fruit, you lose a guy. Um, Swimmer gives you an extra life at 10,000 points. And then that's it. So you'll notice on the side here, there are four different fruits um, that fill up that little grid. One of them are the strawberries, which are right there. This is a power pellet. You know, kind of like Pac-Man, you grab that. You can kill all these guys for 200 points. Now there are other fruits in the levels as well that don't fill up the grid. Um, they're worth much fewer points. And what happens is when you fill up the grid, it gives you a bonus at the end of each um, rotation of the four levels. So right now I'm on grade one, which is the, the first four levels. If you get all four strawberries in any given level, it'll give you an extra thousand point bonus for that level. And points are hard to come by in this game, so... Um, the world record is 150,000 points by Steve Wagner, who has a lot of, uh, world records. My highest score is 149,000 points, so I was only off by 1,000 points. Um, I used to film my, uh, record attempts on this game a lot. Um, on my YouTube channel, I think I actually have a, I have like 142,000 points game uploaded. I didn't actually film the 149,000 one. And I just haven't gotten back into going for the world record. Um, about five or maybe five years ago, four years ago, at one of the Brofest tournaments in, in New Hampshire up at Fun Spot, um, I was actually talking to Steve Wagner about about the record, and he was really cool, encouraging me to go for it. Um, I tried, but got really close. Haven't tried, though, in, in years. Honestly, I don't really play this game that often, because I would hate to get the record and not be filming it. I do still play it for fun, but, you know, I, I just want to get it, so... <laughs> This level, they're just plummeting down these like water bugs. Um, I tend to stay to the left here and just keep trying to dodge the guys coming to the left. There is no safe spot on this level. So there's nowhere that you can just like hide and, and let them all go past you. So now that, that was the third level, now I'm on the final level of grade one. It's not like, you don't see that big crab at the end. You just have to kill all these fish with the power pellet, so. This level can be tricky because um, the rocks can really get in the way of um, 
not only is the hit detection kind of poor, but also like the placement of the rocks. So like you try to swim past it and it looks like you're past it, but you kind of get stuck. So um, that can be a tough level. And that's the first round of the entire game. So um, you can see now I got the bonus for filling in. I didn't get the, the green, the melons which means I actually just lost out on uh, 4,000 points by not getting that. So that's actually a big mistake um, as far as going for points. Uh, a fun fact about this game is that this game came out before Mario Brothers. And supposedly, from what I've read on Glob and uh, somewhere else, a couple other places, I guess, is that this game, even though it was very rare and uncommon, was supposedly the inspiration for the turtles. Shit, I missed the green one again. In Mario Brothers. Whether or not that's 100% true, I'm not sure, but that's what's online. <laughs> that big crab it's best to just kind of hang back and let them get right up to you and just dive under them I find that in this game the more you dive, uh, the tougher it is to have control because you come up to the surface and it's hard to control where you're going to come up on the surface. So you might come up right into an enemy. Um, I think it's easier to kind of fall back and, uh, and just maneuver your way around the logs as well as the, the crabs and other enemies that you have to avoid. So we're back to stage three, which is the uh, water bug stage. Now they're starting to come out, definitely coming out faster. And it becomes way more risky to go to the middle and get the power pellet, which I just almost lost the guy doing. Unfortunately, I'm not going to get the, uh, the melons again, so I'm going to lose out on another 4,000 points at the end of grade two. I just completed the banana um, grid right there, so I'll at least get 2,000 points for that. I've, I haven't had RAM issues on this game. I used to have them a long time ago. I probably just, just have to reseat, take the PCB out and reseat everything, but um, it is kind of annoying. <laughs> I didn't realize it was actually on the game, so I would have uh, I would have done that before I started filming the video, had I realized.
right, so going into the fourth stage of grade two, 47,000 points. And just like Pac-Man, the further you get into the game, the quicker they start changing back once you get the power pellet, so um, it becomes really tough. The new guy coming out, by the way, does not have, um, the power pellet does not affect him, so you gotta beware that you don't try to hit one of the uh, new guys coming out of the top. And if you lose a guy, you have to start completely over, so like if I died now, I wouldn't have just the one guy left, it would bring back all five or six of them. So again, I'm going to get the 1,000 points, 2,000, 3,000, but I'm not going to get the, um, the 4,000 there, which, which does suck. The reason the uh, strawberries aren't filled in is because they reset with every single level. Uh, these levels with the logs, I find kind of like I was talking about before, where um, it's almost easier to not dive. Because again, you come up and it's kind of unpredictable, and and you can uh, crash right into one. So I find it's best to just kind of try to weave your way around the logs. The Monroe joystick really um, gives the game a very smooth uh, control in comparison to like an 8-way Wicko. So other games you would find a Monroe joystick on are like Gyrus, which I have behind me, um, Time Pilot. Uh, they were also on Circus Charlie, even though that's a two-way game. Um, Rampage, for whatever reason, had uh, Monroe joysticks. Um, probably one or two other games that I'm, I'm forgetting about. I've already filled in the banana row, which is great. When there's a big pile up of logs there, you can kind of hang out in the right corner and the crabs will start to, they'll automatically move as you kind of approach them. All right, so in this level, I really need to get the grapes and the green melon. Um, so there's the grapes, because I can't lose out on the 4,000 points again. So really, that's the main goal here. Now there's always going to be a, a thing of grapes and a melon on this level. I believe there should be. There it is. Risky to go that far across, but need the points.
All right, making our way through. <coughs> but I've definitely gotten to, uh, you know, lost multiple lives on these uh, four stages before. That was freaking close. Oh, come on. And there too, like, you know, you hit the guy, but they go right above you. I like to try to draw them down and uh, by spinning around down there and then trying to get past them. See there, like I should have gotten both of those guys. <laughs> Alright, one more. This time I'll wind up with the extra 4,000, so that'll be a 10,000 point bonus. So I'll go from 74,000 right now to 84. I used to actually track, um, you know, how much I was going into each uh, grade with, whether I was on track for a 150,000 point game. But I don't remember anymore. It's been so long since I've really played this. I love this right here. You can squeeze through those logs. I'm not sure if a lot of people know that. But it makes that little cluster right there much easier to get through. These are by far the easiest levels, these uh, the turtle levels. They're kind of pattern-based, so you, know, you just avoid the stuff and make your way through. And having a good Monroe joystick makes that a lot easier too. Oh, I didn't like having that log right in front of me, but had to go for it because he was closing in. See, that was a risky dive right there because I kind of came up uh, in a dangerous spot. Uh, the other thing about these, the crabs, is they never actually go fully across the screen, so like you can kind of gauge where they're going to end their track. So if they're on the right side, they're never going to fully make it over to the left border. So like you could kind of hang out here on the wall. It doesn't always work, but uh, it's not a terrible strategy. A lot of times too, like, see there, I made a move to the left, almost like Donkey Kong, where you make a move to the ladder and the barrels will steer that way. You can almost kind of steer the, the crabs to where you start to move up and, and they might move. Like right there, I went a little bit earlier than he probably would have moved on his own. Getting that uh, power pellet there towards the end is great too because sometimes those crabs, the little ones, will get you as you're trying to dive under the big one.
All right, so I'm hoping there's gonna be one more thing of grapes on this level so I can fill in the rest of the grid. Otherwise, I'm gonna be out 3,000 points at the end of this. That was, that was dangerous to go for. Ah. So, just got over 100,000. Now we gotta deal with these guys. If you miss the power pellet, <coughs> you really get screwed because it's just so hard. You have to wait for another one. Oh, fuck. Come down. Come on. Now they're just all over me right now. Oh, that was kind of risky to go for that guy because um, that the timer was about to run out for the power pellet, but... And I don't even know what they actually call that in this game. I just call it a power pellet because of because of Pac-Man. On the game instructions here, it says you get energized and it just shows the logo of it. So they don't even have a name for it. Oh, that was close. That almost touched my toes. 
and had that been maybe just a few more pixels up, that would have definitely got me. Uh, kind of like Donkey Kong also, where like you can just have the tip of your toe touch one of the, the pies on the pie factory stage and and you lose a guy. Shit. Oh, I wanted that. The green thing. So normally at this point of the game, if I had a couple guys left and I had a good game going, I would probably just hang out in this bottom corner to uh, kind of just go get through this level, but for this video, that would be boring, so unless if it's necessary, I'm going to try not to do that. I mean, that's been my strategy for a long time, too. Who knows? Maybe, maybe just being in the middle will pay off, and it's a strategy I should start doing instead. And every once in a while, too, they won't move over for you, and then you're you're basically screwed because oh boy. Ah, I was kind of trapped. I didn't know where to go on that. Now, the game does have a thing right here where you can get a bonus guy. Oh, my God. I happen to get it. I never get that. It never works out. Normally, in a high score attempt, if I do happen to get it, I'll just I'll end the game because... Um, But on the Twin Galaxy rules, they used to they used to specifically say that you could use the extra guy. I don't know if it still says it or not because it's a it's technically I guess not a a chance of, of luck. It's a I guess maybe it'd be considered a chance of skill that you can like hit it on the number. So we'll keep going. If you're still watching up to this point, and uh, if you've never played this game, oh, there we go. That's the end. Um, but you do use MAME, I would definitely suggest downloading this game. Um, it's a good game. It's fun. You know, it's, it's colorful. It's got, um, you know, it has. It has. I like the fact that it's it's kind of a quicker gameplay compared to some others. Well, I mean, actually, that that was about a half hour, so I guess it's not that quick. Um, the the theme music to me, I don't mind it. My wife, for example, she hates it. <laughs> she actually loves all these games, so she's not like a like a, a hater of like the arcade and the and the games themselves. But this particular game, she can't stand the music. So, anyways, um, that's gonna do it for this video, just because. It is getting a little long now. Um, you know, that was like a half hour and the intro and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, so that's it. Um, feel free to, uh, you know, subscribe to my channel. I've been trying to upload new videos more often. Um, I have a Twitch channel, which is also uh, Cosmic Cottage Arcade. I have an Instagram uh, um, page which is also Cosmic Cottage Arcade. And I tend to use that the most. I upload just pictures here and there of new games and uh, things I'm working on and um, all sorts of stuff like that. Just pictures from down here. So anyways, thanks again for watching and um, I will see you guys soon.